Hey everybody, Hello. welcome back to Sunday Tea Book, The Classic of Tea, Chapter 6, Episode 11. Oh yeah. I almost all say 12. I got it all right? Good. <laughs> yes. Welcome back. We are brewing today a delicious dark tea from a province to be found out in tea trivia time. So Instagram <laughs> people, hop on over to YouTube so you can participate in tea trivia. Uh, and you can scurry and start looking up where this wonderful Tianjian tea comes from. I have not sipped this tea in a shamefully long time, so I'm super stoked mm -hmm. to start brewing this tea. Um, you gotta let me know what's in your cup right now, please. And hello to everybody on YouTube and hello to Tall Circus on Instagram, waving right back at you. Hello there. Um, you might have missed my previous announcement that we are going to reveal the <laughs> province from which Tianjian hails in Tea Trivia Time, which from the Instagram perspective, you will, have, you will miss out. So you probably want to jump over to YouTube to enjoy Tea Trivia Time. Um, Do you want to change the view of the... Yeah, yeah, let's have a look at that tea. Also, Instagram people, you can't see the tea up close, but we're showing all the YouTube folks the tea up close. Our whole brewing setup is there. You can watch Jen Brew live. There's a big oh, learning yeah. opportunity. See this? Look yeah, look at, at oh, look at go. that close-up of the leaf. Oh, oh, look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> YouTube people, shout out how good that leaf looks so the Instagram people will run over to YouTube and join you there. Oh, and it looks like Tobias is drinking uh, a Rogue a Rogue Xiang Dan Tong. Mm, oh, that nice. sounds familiar. Sounds really good. Let us know how it brews up. Show, shoot out your tasting notes and everything. Um, Tall Circus on Instagram likes the Monkey King Oolong. Reminds me nice. of the Jungle Book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a Monkey King. Really? Oh, yeah. I only remember the... Yeah. No, he wanted, the, he the, wanted the, the fire. Of, the Monkey King wanted oh, yeah. the man's fire. Yeah, it's a whole song about it. It's a really good song. <laughs> All right. Let me go to my notes to keep me on track and not talking more not about tea with. and less about the Jungle Book. All right, guys. So today's tea, Tianjian. Let us know what's in your cup. Uh, the classic of tea. Oh, I want to talk about this tea and five other teas, five other teas available in our classic of tea sip along six pack. This is a collection of 25 gram um, collection of teas, six teas, 25 grams of each, one of each of the Chinese tea categories, white, yellow, green, oolong, black and dark which are the teas we've been enjoying for the past little while here on Sunday Tea Book. You can grab that on our website. The link is in the YouTube description down below. And um, it's a great value. It's about 25% off if you add up how much they would cost individually. Boom, big savings for you. Um, nice. Uh, so that is that. Sunday Tea Book, we're here with episode 11. This is the second season. We have also done two other books. What is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or an article that is full of great information about Chinese tea and its culture. And we either translate it because it doesn't exist in English, or if it does exist in English, but there's a few bumps and curves along the way, we sort them out and talk about, um, you know, talk about those. And uh, it has been a fascinating experience to do this series with you guys. Why don't we just publish a finished blog with a translation? Well, the reason for that is, is um, prior to having a concept of Sunday Tea Book, working with Jen together on various aspects of Chinese tea would evoke a lot of rich discussion about history, why it's called like this, why do you do this custom, blah, blah, blah. And the actual, that process is so enriching, we didn't want to steal it from you guys. And to be more maybe totally transparent, I also can't figure it all out. I need your help. Sometimes I stumble. She's, what's the word? Or how do we explain that? Mm. We lean on you guys. You guys can chime in. You can participate in the discussion as it's happening. It has been a fascinating um, experiment that is becoming sort of part of our tradition. We love this time. I love this time. Jen loves this time to dive into this nerdy tea stuff with you guys. And sometimes it's really basic and fundamental too. But sometimes we go deep. You got to join us every week to see what exactly is going to happen. And uh, that is the what and the why of Sunday Tea Book. Just before we talk about the tea, I want to remind you guys that we have a brand new video series 
called Ask Jan Lee. You can check our YouTube for the Ask Jan Lee. See, check out the first installment of Ask Jan Lee and shoot your comments out either on our, either on our, oops, on our Discord page, <laughs> which you can find the link in the YouTube description down below. You can shoot them out in there. We've got a section just for Ask Jan Lee questions. You can shoot them in the comments of any of our YouTube videos. Just say, hey, what would Jan Lee say about blah, blah, blah. Just make sure it's clear to us that the question is directed at Jan Lee, and maybe your questions will be featured in the next installment of Ask Jan Lee Wu. Now I am going to sip this phenomenal tea and have a little talking break. <laughs> I'm just like a machine gun when Sunday Tea Book starts. I just don't stop. See, I still haven't stopped. That's great because sometimes I get doughy because I prepare the whole thing in the morning. Very uh, <laughs> slightly stressful. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> and, uh, and I want to give a shout out. You can't yeah. brag for yourself, but this book, The Classic of Tea, is a monster, okay? It's 1200 years old. That has a lot of implications on the amount of effort Jen has to put into this. It has been tremendously fun, but mm. a lot of work for her. So everybody mm. um, find the little clap emoji <laughs> and fire those up in the YouTube comments, fire them up in the uh, Instagram comments for Jen and uh, the amazing job she's done of bringing us this otherwise very difficult to access Mm. ancient text for there's no well, other way to call it I try my best and uh, I try to put that in a way that is uh, easier to digest um, mm. any suggestions to improve my work is always welcome uh, just to say because of that intense morning I often have 10 minutes sit down here to get prepared and then I get just super doughy because I finally oh everything's done and I'm ready you know then, ready for a break yeah so <laughs> I really <laughs> appreciate when you like chat and I can have a mini break I really love that and uh, just wanna again I'm very proud of my work and I'm really proud that you guys join me and make this whole uh, series more enriched in content and uh, better how should I say like the bridge of the cultural difference, language difference, mm. or time difference. But uh, this is the book I use, oh, don't cover the name, the book I use for uh, reference in terms mm. of the version of a uh, uh, classic of tea and a lot of translations and stuff. And this is a very, very rich book in information and knowledge and all the studies and stuff. Like I couldn't do much without this. Mm. book so uh, it's uh, called uh, Cha Jing Shu Ping and uh, by Mr. Wu Juenong uh, a leading figure in Chinese tea industry and uh, modern Chinese tea industry so just want to point that out so it's really standing on the shoulders of giants that yes. are out of necessity like yes. uh, the the work yes. is uh it's amazing yes absolutely and, and as you can see on the oh, YouTube comments, you. everybody loves it. Thank you guys for shooting those out. Mm, and uh, I'm going to say it, okay? okay? So this is the last, uh, second last, yes. second last episode. Next week, we are going to have the finale We're of the wrap it season up. two and uh, finish with this book. Which is sad, when, but also exciting. Yes, it's yes. nice to finish something. I feel pretty uh, Do I look overly excited? Yeah, don't look too excited. <laughs> Maybe it's like, whoosh. But yes, uh, that's very exciting. And um, I just realized something is we, I think we publish the tea for next week, which I would be swapped because we do have a little serving of the tea uh, gifted by Mr. Wu Juenong's uh, son. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I will talk a little bit more about that. Wow. Okay, so we'll be updating next week's Sip Along Tea. A little bit of history about that tea and... Uh, <laughs> I'm just wondering if I put a question in tea trivia about what is next week's Sip Along Tea. Okay, I, it's changing. If so. I did, stick with that one for now because at this point, I don't even know what it is. All right, so stick mm -hmm. with the, uh, your current knowledge set. If the, I don't even remember if the question's there. Yeah. So um, on that note... Yes, we are wrapping up next week and I think we are ready to say goodbye to Instagram. Okay, bye-bye everybody on Instagram. <laughs> Head over to YouTube, okay? Because we're going to have tea trivia and you're going to miss it. It's super fun. Bye. What a bridge. Okay. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Sorry, I just have to... Uh... 
Yeah. I don't know. I have to be Instagrammy when I use Instagram. Mm. You're very good at it. All right. So um, thank you everybody for appreciating Jen's hard work. And um, now it's time for you to return the favor and get to work because guess <laughs> what's coming up next? That's right. It is coming up as I goof around with the production software and all that jazz because I'm doing it all by myself. It is <laughs> Productive Manager. Tea Trivia, trivia. Time. Wow. Yes, right, folks. It is Tea Trivia Time where you're just going to ask a few little fun questions. You're going to press the number on your keyboard to enter the answers when the questions start to, whoops a daisy, <laughs> when the questions start to arrive. It's all about having fun and just take a guess if you don't know the answer. Some of the questions are related to uh, the classic of tea. Some of them are just random. Let's just have a, a little bit of fun with this. All right, here we go. Let's get started. What is the perfect number of bowls of Tang Dynasty tea to prepare? Very similar to a question from last week, but not quite the same. What is the perfect number of bowls of Tang Dynasty tea to prepare? Not the maximum, the perfect. Is it around 12? Is it two? Is it three? Or is it five bowls? A little bit confusing. Enter the number that is next to the answer, not the number that is the answer. Um, and then hit enter. Best if you don't comment. And the best if you enter it quickly so that the computer can pick up your answer and, uh, and whoa, take care of it. <laughs> All right, so um, last week we had a question, what is the maximum? This week is what is the best? All right, we have answers rolling in. A2 Easy has taken a stab at the answer three, which is three. And uh, Tobias has gone with uh, the answer five. Let's see what the answer will be. Oh, I'm going to get a little bit more tea. The, uh, the smoky woodiness of this tea, I have to say, I really have... Oh, here we go. I didn't think the answer would uh, would shoot up so quickly, but two of you got it right. A too easy and D's versified. The answer, the perfect number is three bowls. Five is the maximum. So good guess from uh, from Kelu and Tobias. That was a pretty you know it's in the zone. It's in the zone, and uh, good work on all of the answers. And that's the spirit. You know, just throw in a guess and see what happens. You never know. Mm. Calming. All right, folks, next question. According to Lu Yu, drinking tea as a beverage truly became popular around this time. Was it the one, Zhou Dynasty, two, the Tang Dynasty, three, the Han Dynasty, or four, during the time of Zhou Gong? So, according to Lu Yu, this is the time that tea as a beverage truly became popular. Was it the Zhou Dynasty, the Tang Dynasty, the Han Dynasty, or during the time of Zhou Gong. Struggle to say that Roman, right? Pretty good. <sighs> yeah, I you think- this tea, I think the nickname should be by the fireplace. Yes, it is so by the wood fire and almost you can smell the stones, mm. the old wood. I really on the- The cooling air as well. Yeah, on the website, I describe it as being in an old, like a wood cabin, and it really has that character, really makes me um, feel that. All right, the answers are rolling in. Way to go, everybody. And D is versified and A too easy. Got it correct. It is the Tang Dynasty, Lu Yu's own time when tea as a beverage really became uh, popular. Tobias, way to, way to get out there and uh, submit an answer, just going for it. And Kelu just missed just missed uh, under the wire, didn't get included, so, but we saw that you had the right idea. Good job, everybody. I actually steal the name from a perfume by Replica, they call it by the fireplace. I didn't like that, but I thought this is the definition. For right, me. right. All right, today's sip along tea, I promised you this in the intro, folks. Today's sip along tea comes from which province? Is it one, Hunan, two, Hubei, three, Guizhou, or four, Chongqing? I usually put at least one ridiculous answer in here, but I don't think I really did that this time. I really picked uh, a little cluster of provinces all around the correct answer. So good luck, everybody. Take a guess. Today's sip along tea, Tianjian, a dark tea comes from which province? Is it one, Hunan, two, Hubei, three, Guizhou, or four, Chongqing? Mm, we've had a few really nice teas from Chongqing in the past. I wonder if this is one of them. Hmm. 
The answer is flooding in now. Um, Kelu getting in early this time, good for you, with a Hunan, A too easy, guessing Guizhou, Tobias also voting for Hunan, and D's versified, throwing down Hunan. Hmm, we've got a majority on Hunan. And the answer is Hunan, way to go, all of you guys who got that right. Let me pepper in a little bit of cheering for you guys. A too easy, good guess, good try, we to get out there and make a guess. The correct answer is indeed Hunan, that is where this tea comes from. Maybe next tea trip. Tea trips are something we can start and think about again. A province I have, I'm thinking carefully, but I'm pretty sure I have never been to Hunan. So no. that would be a fun spot to go. Yeah. Good morning, Lynn. You're not too late to participate in tea trivia. Just shoot in the number morning. and hit enter when you got the right answer. When you think you have the right answer, but don't hesitate or it won't, it'll be too late. Here's our next question. According to Lu Yu, this is a good way to make your tea taste like ditch water. Mm. Is it one, pour the liquid from high to make the tea liquid smooth or remove the foam? Sorry about the extra one. Just remove the foam. Two, Lu Yu loved tea so much he would never equate it to ditch water. Is it three, add the first bowl of boiling water back into the boiled tea to promote foam? Or is it four, add dirt and sand to the tea? <laughs> mm. You never know. Mm. Remember, this is according to Lu Yu. This is a good way to make your tea into ditch water. Is it pour the liquid from high to make the tea liquid smooth or remove the foam? Is it that he loved tea too much and would never equate it to ditch water? Is it add the first bowl of boiling water back into the boiled tea to promote foam? Or is it four, add dirt and sand to the tea? Couple guesses for add the first bowl of water. It's a little bit tricky, guys. Yes, last week we covered that that is actually one of the actual steps in preparing Tang Dynasty tea is adding the first bowl of boiling water back into the boiling tea to promote foaming. But if you pour the liquor from high and make the tea liquid smooth and remove that foam, you've effectively destroyed the tea according to Lu Yu. Really interesting. We'll talk about that mm. a little bit more today. Mm. I might it's get... It's half of the thing. Mm. The other half is add a bunch of uh, stuff in the tea. That's right. That's right. I left that one out. I couldn't fit it all. Oh, okay. All right, guys. <laughs> what is the next week's... What was... Let me, let me update the question slightly. <laughs> what was next week's sip along tea until we found out we're having a super special finale tea? Was it one, Sujo Jasmine green tea, two, Guanyin Hong black tea, three, Dayu Qing yellow tea, or four, Autumn Te Guanyin oolong tea? I'm not promoting that you do this, but if you were to check the YouTube link, the correct tea would still be there. We haven't updated with the new edition yet. Yeah. Did you? No, oh, not yet. That would be so funny if you did. <laughs> Which one is it? Which one is it? Take a guess and you're the best. I'm gonna have to make some sound bites first next next yeah. uh, next season's. Uh, Tea Trivia series. All right, the guesses are rolling in. We've got a, a guess for Dalia Tsing, at least one, I think. I might have missed a couple earlier submissions. Oh boy, this is good, warming up here. And Tobias got the answer right. It is Dalia Tsing Yellow Tea, which was to be the tea for next week, but we are going to have a tea that was, did you say it's gifted? Mm, by, uh, by Wu Junong? The son, Mr. The Wu son. Jiaxi. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so just to remind you guys, the author of the yeah. book that is the, the, the that we're working on, it's his son who gifted us this tea. Wow, yeah. that's really cool. Good uh, family friends. Wow. Who also All passed right. away this year, actually. Who which? Uh, his son, Mr. Wu Jiaxue, also passed away this year oh. of 90 something. Tea drinkers always live up to 90-something. Yeah, 90-something. <laughs> All right, guys, way to go, everybody. Good guesses, a little bit of a somber finish. D's versified, three correct answers, A too easy, two. These numbers are all wrong anyways. You guys are all winners in my book. Everybody got five out of five just for showing up and playing tea trivia time. Now it's time to dive into chapter six of the classic of tea. Here we go. Here we go. I'm serious about this. <laughs> Oh boy, slow. All right, gotta love that. That's great. I just love how you were having so much fun with that and your little song. 
Yeah, I don't know. We uh, we cover some pretty serious, heady stuff here on mm. um, on Sunday Tea Book, and mm -hmm. uh, in general on the channel, we're real tea nerds. But I don't think that means we can't have fun. I, uh, I, I always feel like we gotta have fun with this, and I uh, love having fun with you guys. So yeah, yeah. So chapter six, the name is drinking, which uh, if I haven't read it, I would. Imagine talking about how do you drink tea, right? Maybe you were uh, thinking about tea etiquette. When you drink, you mm. do this, you do that. But on the other hand, on the other hand, sorry. I mean, as a matter of fact, he just spent a little bit of time at the very end of the chapter to say how you drink. And mm. in terms of how, it's not I personally sip. It's how do you, when you boil a pot of tea, how do you... Uh, share that with mm. the different numbers of people. Uh, the majority of the chapters was almost like a recap of uh, tea customs before uh, his time and to his time mm. and how people are enjoying tea. Right. And he also quickly, uh, quickly mentioned about how difficult in terms of uh, making, drinking tea, he called that nine difficulties, right? Plucking, making, choosing teaware, boiling, all those stuff, mm -hmm. which we have um, expanded in previous episodes a lot about a um, little bit of detail. So I was thinking, what do I want to, what do I want to say in this chapter since he didn't explain what I thought he would be explaining. But uh, in terms of the history and the custom, it's actually and so re uh, such a rich topic that uh, we. I think it's a good way for me just to quickly touch on it and introduce it in uh, in a broad way of how the tea is enjoyed in China, because mm. oftentimes whenever we talk about. Uh, teas, or especially Gongfu tea, people say this is how uh, Chinese people traditionally have tea, or this is how Chinese. Uh, mm. It's a, a, I think it's a great one sentence to introduce, but it's not very um, accurate at all. So that would be most of uh, today what we're talking about. But before that, because he also touched on the history thing, so I want to quickly just add a few of. Uh, archaeological discoveries about uh, tea, which um, is a rather recent discovery of uh, when exactly in the archaeology sense Chinese start to have tea, right? In mm. record, we often say Shenno started, which is far ancient times. Mm. Then we have a book so talking about in Zhou Dynasty, which is around uh, 2000 BC, but the discovery from uh, the tomb in Shandong province of Zhou Guo, uh, which is a recent uh, discovery, they found the pieces of uh, brewed tea uh, mm. leftovers. Physical evidence. Yes. Not written record. Pretty yes. cool stuff. Which uh, date back to 2400 years ago. Mm. Just to wow. say, uh, Shandong is the province, uh, simply speaking, between the latitude between like Beijing and Shanghai. So rather north, where the origin oh. of uh, uh, tea is in the Sichuan province, southeast Sichuan, uh, uh, sorry, Sichuan, Yunnan, mm. and that area, that uh, warm, humid forest area. So in 2400 years ago, the tea has already it's has already its, traveled, huh? It's traveling, mm. yeah. So I think that was pretty interesting and uh, meaningful. And I think you found some That's pretty cool. Yeah, right? so I went on and I thought this is pretty cool stuff. So I found some pictures. So this is the cup or bowl that they found. It's a 2400 year old bowl. They found residue in this. The residue looked something like this. So it was sort <laughs> of a, sorry the picture's a little bit small. But um, you know, those little black and white squares are centimeters. So you're looking at like a, you can see it's a pretty big cup bowl. About five or six centimeters across. So there's this chunk of uh, earth and tea inside of it and then I got I found a close-up too of the sort of the dirt with the little particles of tea so uh, I think on the left we've got like a uh, what would that be like about a, a centimeters worth of dirt and then we zoom right in 
down to like 200 microns or something and we can see the little T. I guess the black stuff is T. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know, but but we pretty cool stuff, experts right? Experts to tell us what exactly those yeah, but just to give you a show. Want. The links to um to where I found those pictures and the little write up about this find, which I think was 2018. I think I gave mm. it a super quick read. Something like that. Um, the links are down below, as are the as is the link to the website. If you're on the YouTube site and you're you're down, you can see our our description. There's a link to the website where you can follow along with today's chapter, which uh, which I would recommend. And if you're already watching on the website, well, you're on the page because you could do that too. The video is also right there. Ta da! <laughs> Ta da! Yeah, because before that piece was discovered, previously the earliest, uh, the most earliest uh, tea evidence, people consuming tea, not just tea, people mm. consuming tea evidence was discovered in the tomb of the emperor of Han Dynasty, Han Jindi. That was 2100 years ago. So with this recent -ish discovery, right. pushing another 300, 300 years. maybe in the future, there's even more. We'll yeah, see. it's getting with the tricky technology, though. for like organic material to just last that long. Ooh, you need they, they, pretty good conditions, right? It's all about technology. Now the technology, wow. they push the first wow. uh, gram discovery too. Wow. And a lot. Yeah. And also another interesting thing is when we talk about the tea, uh, because basically you come out from China and the culture of drinking and growing it spread slowly throughout the world, right? And we used to talk about uh, uh, how Tang Dynasty is the kind of uh, almost the starting point of tea culture going outward. Mm. Uh, major mm. things like uh, the, um, uh, the very early form of tea wars road between mm -hmm. Tang Dynasty and Tibet. And uh, there's uh, also uh, there was some discovery in uh, high west part of Tibet where it's um, it's the uh, altitude is about forty five hundred meters high in the Adi area, and uh, they found a tea residue as well. Wow! So that dates back around eighteen hundred years ago. Uh, it kind of uh, also uh, is a part of the connection of the Silk Road. Like when mm. we talk about the Silk Road or uh, say T Horse Road, it's not literally just roads. It's actually a network of roads. Yeah. So um, it's it's actually a fun evidence that the tea started to spread out in early times, much much earlier than the Tom Dynasty when tea was totally a trendy, popular, common. Uh, beverage in China. Right. I'll throw the link. We have a that that that. Tea Horse Road thing, that thing is a topic of all of its own that we have mm. a video on about how it's actually the Tea Horse network of roads. Um, I'll put the link down below, it will appear after, sometime after the video. I can't do that. Like uh, The tea trivia is as fancy as I get, okay? It'll be later, but it'll be down there. Keep an eye out for it. <laughs> or just dig around in the YouTube, you know? Yeah. Oh, Lin says, uh, we seem so sweet. Right? <laughs> Uh, only reason funds your channel. I'm very much yeah, thanks, Lynn. Right that was really wrong. nice. Thank I you. saw that. I don't know if you see me randomly smile. It's because I probably read one of your beautiful comments oh, like so that. Nice. It always makes yes. me smile at a at a weird times. So. so if you see me <laughs> randomly smile, you can just think, "Oh, he read my comment," and that, that's probably exactly what happened. Yeah, and um, you know uh, the the tea trivia question that you just said about the what uh, Lu Yu call that ditch dirt tea? water dirt, ditch dirt, water. Dirt, yeah, 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 that yeah. kind of thing. One of the things. Thing Louis didn't like was to add various stuff mm. in tea, which was uh, pretty common prior to prior his or even his time. Right, right. Uh, but we noticed right uh, in the previous episode uh, he he's not uh, drinking straight up tea like we are today. Like, except uh, besides he boils tea the way he also adds the salt. Hmm. Right, but he doesn't like adding other spices. And I think stuff. onion was on the list. Yeah, garlic. onion, garlic, all those stuff. <laughs> Pretty um, strong well, flavors. I don't know if you guys ever tried that at home. I think we have a video tried uh, to put those and boil and stuff. It really didn't. Yeah, we did more the anise, clove, and yeah, no. It was a hard <laughs> no. <laughs> We're used to those. Uh, no. Yeah, mm. bare, bare tea. But. Mm. That's actually that's a tradition. That's the tradition link, uh, kind of a passed down through the time when tea was in first initially herb, but early time herb. You know, you don't have much 
a selection of herbs is probably because mm -hmm. green onions and garlic those are still considered could be medicinal even nowadays right right so it passed down from that then it become a food item which cooks with that so that history even though Lu Yu didn't like that uh, custom that culture not only was a uh, very popular at the time even throughout uh, thousands of years after him it was still very very popular so i want to quickly go through some uh interesting cultural tea cultures in china uh, there are some people that are uh you know minority uh, groups that they have their tea drinking habits and some are just a uh, Han people in different regions mm. that have a lot of uh, different ways of enjoying tea but all of those you you will see the shadow of ancient way of drinking right. tea uh, and I also just before I dive into that I also want to say this is not where I would mention the region but this is not a standard anymore a lot of those old customs are uh, going away as n nowadays the whole world is kind of equalizing. Unifying, homogenizing. Yes, yeah, yes yeah. homogenizing. Yeah. Mm. So uh, uh, just for my experience of traveling to different uh, places, I love to, my mom and I, we all love to see how different people enjoy mm. tea. If you check my Tibet video, you notice when we go to Tibet, it's really, really hard to find people who are still making old style yeah. Tibetan tea because they have blenders. They're the tools not are changing. The butter. Of course. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So uh, all the things I've mentioned here are their traditional way of having tea. That if you go to the region nowadays, you might not see it, or you might see it in some tourist spot that they perform for us. So right. the, the, for me, I lose a little bit of. Something yeah, I should like that. mention just in case because you'd mentioned how your mom and you go looking for it, but they you know they're insiders so they go looking for it in the in the inform you know not in a tourist spot if they can find it which it's not always possible right mm -hmm. um, but in you know in people's homes and with tea producers and stuff like that which is you know sort of uh, amazing and I just want to address Tobias he had a great question which is um, meaningful here how does salt improve the tea with three question marks mm -hmm. and probably a few exclamation marks implied there <laughs> and you know my flippant answer is well it doesn't mm -hmm. But yeah. when you're talking about those cultures where there's tea, many of them do add some salt still to this day, right? Yes, I think the mm. thing, this question is a great question. Mm. But to answer it, I have to first uh, break that down to several parts, right? When we talk first, right, improve. What we think improve might it's not that, be yeah. what Lu Yu at that time think of improve. Right. So that's the first layer we could talk in details about that. Right, Second right. is uh, tea, uh, salt improves tea. like quantity matters mm. right uh wonder i don't know what his water was like or stuff sometimes you put like we do bakery right we hey, it's a sweet dessert but why do we put a pinch of salt mm. there's something works in that but of course right. we're not putting a big amount of salt so uh unfortunately he wasn't very specific and didn't explain well in terms of uh, when how much right the ratio it's why he adds salt right, but right. he does add salt so uh, it's a good question that uh, I I don't know the answer and I feel like it's a it's a it's maybe, a good topic to you know keep exploring yeah and maybe experiment with too is um, try it like uh, I didn't think about your comment about the quantity one thing I was thinking about when and whenever salt comes up I always think about you know we could turn the question on its head and ask how does the amount of we often end up if we eat out at a restaurant we often end up I won't use the word complaining but noticing the amount of salt in the food is a little bit over the top so we could say the same thing about that food how is this improving the food it tastes like I'm eating salt um, which is just a uh, the way a lot of restaurants use salt is aggressive so but anyway I didn't want to so it it I'm gonna make an effort to experiment with a little little bits of salt in my tea to see if it does have that you know a little bit of salt has a very well, our tea is not his tea though the process is I know different. I know I'm just gonna have fun okay. with it though uh, yeah, yeah yeah have fun <laughs> but yeah it's a good point of course, first have fun try it out 
But be aware that、uh, we're not in the same time. We're not in the、it's、same t- key process. Of, all like, different processes, yeah. yeah. So we won't be able to capture、uh-huh. that. But it, because I think the question is intriguing, that, is, and that's the question I had too.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, why、yeah. you put salt? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and oh, I was going to say too. Ancient times, salt is、uh, expensive. It's fancy. Mm. And it's、uh, hard to get, so maybe it's just another way to get a little bit more into your diet. It wasn't like now we have plenty of salt, we have plenty of iodine, everything's fine.、Um, in fact, maybe we have too much salt. Yes, we do.、Um, so maybe it's related to that too. Just、yeah. use some salt、yeah. and show、yeah. off your how wealthy you are. Psst, put that in my tea, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Could be. No, could be. It happens a lot just to show off. Anyways, <laughs> that was fun.、Um, just to quickly talk about the custom that I, I made a big list, I think.、Mm, okay, so、uh, if you go to、uh, Hunan province, which this tea is from, they make dark teas and stuff, and they also、uh, have traditionally a, a smoked kind of tea, and they not only drink tea and but also eat the tea.、Uh, Really funny. I have Hunan friends. I never hear them like have to drink the tea. They、uh, nowadays, if have you have、uh, friends from Hunan, a lot of times they're t- green tea drinker. They don't even drink much dark tea、mm. because it's it used to be export to the West. So eating the tea leaves, that's a pretty unique one. To the west, to the ta- oh, oh, to sorry, Tibet, to, to ba- to right? Ba- just to be Tibet, clear, because、uh, you know, there's Xinjiang a area, yes, right, yes, right. So not the a, west, like Europe. Like,、mm, sorry, gotcha. Yeah, no, yeah. just to clarify, because、yeah, yeah, I said it, it's、that's、always、great. a little bit of it. Those dark、yes. tea were made for those no, people. No, that's that's、yeah. great because sometimes I use words that overly loose and they could be ambiguous and stuff.、Mm. And、uh, many culture actually, even around the world, as、uh, green onion, ginger, date, and other stuff、mm. in the tea.、Mm. You know, even some parts in Africa, West,、uh, East,、uh, Middle or West Asia, uh, uh, Southwest and uh, so, uh, Northwest of China. This、mm-hmm. this、mm-hmm. is actually very common kind of、uh, custom in China. Uh, so and if you go to like a Hunan, uh, uh, Hubei area, they have a special tea that my mom always talk about. She never had. She also want to try a lot,、uh, but、uh, we had a problem finding those kind of a tea. The the custom is more of the custom. It's、mm. called a New Year Cha. Daughter tea is not a good translation, but that's there. there. They put、oh. you know sesame. They put.、Uh, Uh, lotus seeds and、mm-hmm. uh, candy date, those stuff in the tea. Okay,、it's、I gotta a, say I'm loving that mixture. Yeah, that it should, should be pretty, pretty delicious, delicious, right? <laughs> It's kind of a more formal having guests or treating the guests a kind of a tea ceremony,、uh, rather than regular tea.、Mm. And、um, if you go to Guangxi province,、uh, they have a tea called the Da Yu Cha.、Uh, So the process is a little bit interesting. Is the big oil? Tea oil. A、uh, tea oil. What is that? Like oil from tea seeds. Ah.、Uh, speaking of which, I want to say, like、uh, sometimes you might see those tea buds. Some tea called tea buds. People call that white tea or stuff or wild tea buds or stuff. You know, white fuzz, super layer tea buds. Those are not tea. Those are not Camellia sinensis sinensis or. Oh right, right. They look like a, a slightly open green. Exactly,、mm. they're not、uh, right. what we say. It would be more to the herbal tea. It's a tisane.、Right? Tisane,、right. mm. exactly. Mm.、Okay. So that's another variety of、uh, camellia. Same with this、uh, tea、ah. oil. It's not、uh, the tea we're drinking. Right. That right. seed doesn't make that much oil. It's、right. that、uh, the cousin plant that makes、right. oil. So use the tea oil and uh, and um, sticky rice. And tea leaves, all dry,、oh、stir fry, stir fry. Then add water, then boil it. And when you're about to drink it, you put some sesame, but not sesame. Sorry, peanuts,、uh, soybeans,、wow. and、uh, green onions in your bowl, and put the boiling tea in the bowl and drink it. So that's another. Oh, I'm on、custom. the page of wanting to try this. I, it's a little hard to imagine now, but、right? uh, definitely interested. Yeah. 
And in Yunnan, Guizhou area, they often have that kind of a, just directly eat the tea, like a stir fry tea kind of concept. Okay. Have some oil, have some salt, do a stir like, fry. Like a leafy stir fry? Kind of. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, or pickle, pickle tea leaves. That's another way to eat that. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, and if you go to the west, the northwest area, Xinjiang area, the north and south part of them have a quite different uh, uh, custom too. Like uh, the south like to put a pepper, uh, cinnamon, ding xiang, ding xiang, ding xiang. Can't help. Ding xiang. Pepper, mm. cinnamon, mm. The little, oh, clove. Clove? Clove. Oh, yes. Clove. clove. Almost there. With the tea and boil that and drink it. And while the north of the Xinjiang area, they like to have like a, a sweet kind of a tea, like a tea with a, oh, sorry, savor. A tea with a milk and a salt. Wow. Yeah. And as we know, like lots of places, like milk tea uh, for those people are. Uh, kind of a common tea too, mm. like in the like, how do you say nomads? Uh, people right, they right. love that with uh, right. sugar and uh, tea. It's very actually delicious. Personally, I try the savory ones. I I cannot say I like a savory tea. Like right. a sweet tea is more acceptable. So uh, Tibetan people also have that kind of. They have a savory and the sweet too. Both milky. Both are milky. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and uh, if we go a little bit to the southwest, to the uh, like uh, Thailand, uh, Myanmar, uh. and those places, they have a lot of a similar uh, custom, like um, ancient Chinese way of drinking tea, like uh, roast tea. We have a video, we do a roast tea of how Guizhou people roast. So those people also oh. do a tea roasting, put the tea uh, in a jar and uh, roast it once you see the uh, the a little bit of smoke, not fully burned, just a little bit of roasted, like the steam comes out, they put the uh, boiling water and boil that. Or they also have something that is called, also pickling tea, but quite unique, which is you get the fresh tea leaves and you find a, a big, not even jar, uh, a big container that you keep pressing as you keep adding leaves pressing and adding. So it's juice come out and everything right, is fresh. Right. And once it's fully full, you seal the lid and uh, let it uh, pickle or ferment. For, In its own juice. Yeah, for several mm. months. Interesting. Yeah, when it's done, you just get the leaves up and tie it up and go to sell it. So the leaf is totally uh, in the wet state. They don't dry it. And they, they make wow. that in the rain season. So it is actually hard to dry. It's not going to dry out because it's, it's so not humid. Gonna dry. And when you eat it, you mix that with other spices and stuff and chew it. Like you eat it. You don't drink anything with it. Oh, that this would be a, really interesting to yeah, try. It's really similar to the traditional qin shu fa of a tea, which is uh, just uh, storage of the green leaves. But I don't know. Nowadays, I'm like, uh, uh, it doesn't go bad. It actually ferments. It's pretty amazing. In its own juice. I think yes. that's the that's sort of the idea. Yes, is they, they discovered that its own juice has that anti yeah, Exactly. Thing. Yeah. But doesn't that make And a, they crush, they put it in, they crush it, then yeah. they add more crush it. Crushing, add more crush, crush it. it. So they're just getting as much yeah. and really squeeze that and juice. And in the out. rain season it's really humid to right, make that. Right. Like uh, it's really fascinating. I'm so I, much left I to try. I know, I really hope but those kind of things in today's Overall phenomenon is really hard to find. Oh when yeah, they're go not going to. Gonna, those... You're not getting that out of China. That's no. <laughs> going to be tricky to export. Yeah, but what I mean oh. is like everywhere, people use iPhone. People live in modern houses. Right, right. Everything got updated. We start to, you know, burger everywhere. No, not because I heard it, but I hate burger. Just to say, like we're more similar and similar. A lot of those old. What we find interesting right. get out of date for yeah. people. Yeah, Local like we people, were talking yeah. about the Tibet people with, yeah. the, with the, using the blender. Of course they use a blender. It's a lot of work to churn that yeah. butter, right? So yeah. they're going to use whatever. Yeah, I think available. that experience really stick to me of how hard to find those authentic, just old ways. 
yeah. to find that. So whenever I'm uh, reading and learning about this uh, cus- old customs, then just mm. I just feel like uh, I, I don't know if I can find it. Yeah. Anyway, and in dry seasons, so they make tea cake. Sim- imagine something like a sun dried tea cake. It's similar mm. to pu'er, but not quite. Then they put a salt, then they put a green onion and the garlic. The salt is after when they're preparing yeah. that? Yeah, when right. they're preparing that, they add all those stuff. Uh, mixing with some, you know, flour products and stuff, and uh, eat it almost like a snack. So, those I Neat. think all those uh, are different uh, variants of those old custom that people love right. to have tea with something else. It's a kind of a food, not just a right, right. clear beverage. Right. Throw in a couple thousand years of changing this and changing that, and it goes to its own region, changes this way and that way, and you end up with all these different. Costumes yeah. is fascinating. Yeah, those are really fun. But I think uh, talking about the Chinese tea culture going outwards, uh, the one of the key things we cannot forget is actually Japanese tea culture. Mm. Right? We talk about uh, how the culture goes out, and uh, eventually, through thousands of years, eventually they become their own thing, like Japanese tea culture, mm-hmm. uh, Korean tea culture, where all those places, they have their tea culture. It's infused with local cultures. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. But uh, talking about Japanese tea culture, again, a little bit of history. I try to press the history to minimum, so uh, we have a rough idea of the line, but we're not diving into the details of what happened. Yeah, for sure. Those would be whole episodes. <laughs> whole... And I don't, I, I don't think most people uh, like history like I do. So. I try not to get too boring because I personally love it. (laughs) Yeah, well, if you do like history, leave us some comments and who knows what might happen. (laughs) Yes, I love to do a lot of history uh, on teas and cultures because I feel like uh, this is the route, right? Uh, Mm. A lot of people ask me questions and I'd like to answer you from a couple of hundred years ago, which is like, uh, it explains a a lot of whys of nowadays. Anyway. Right. So just let me know if you are those who don't mind a little bit of history or you are those who feel like, let's keep that current. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay, just talking about the uh, Japanese tea. When uh, it's first recorded in Japan that in 729 uh, AD, it was uh, recorded that uh, Japanese people are having tea on paper recorded. But uh, uh, now more Japanese experts are uh, uh, considering it was much earlier when the tea uh, uh, kind of comes to uh, Japan in around uh, 581 to 604. So that's when the, they believe the earliest uh, tea have arrived in Japan. 80, right? Hmm? 80? 581? To 604. Okay. AD. Yes, right, right. AD. Sorry. I don't think they even call it that anymore, so it's okay. Oh, I forget. BCE, BC, no, EBC. CE, I think. CE, okay. There's BCE and CE. I, I forget it. what the new terms are, so sorry, I'm going to use uh, Anno Domini, which is dated. Oh. Sorry. Okay, yes. I CE, really... Christian era, I think, is the new term. CE. Yeah, and I think it's before then it's BCE. BCE. Yes. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. I think CE. it stands okay. for Christian era. Yes. It's less. 5A, 1, 2, 6, 4, CE. And then in 805 CE was the first uh, tea seeds that was brought to uh, Japan by Saiko. Is that Saiko? Let's, I, let's I say Seicho. Seicho. Sorry. We don't want to, it doesn't, we don't Sorry. want to sound too much like Psycho. I just, uh, it was not Norman Bates Zichen. who okay. brought the first tea to, uh, to Japan. It was Seicho. <laughs> Sorry, I know the Chinese. Uh, the Chinese name is Zuichen. Then I look it up on Google about the English name because mm. we call them different. Anyway. Yeah, the transliterations are all yeah. over the map, right? And it was uh, uh, planted uh, in Shigaken. Shigaken, mm-hmm. that's Perfect. the places when he first planted. So that's the start of the Japanese tea grows. And around the same time, another, uh, all of the people who introduced the tea and the, um, tea culture to Japan are Buddhists. The Buddhists, mm-hmm. uh, Buddhists play a major role in tea spread in not only to Japan, Korean, but also man China area is also 
uh, they contributed a lot. So Kukai also helped a lot by bringing tea seeds to Japan. And later on, the major uh, Buddhist uh, A A Sai. Yeah. E I S A I. E Sai I Sai. In the twelfth century, uh, who brought this whole tea ceremony back to Japan, and uh, at that time he has uh, developed some uh, the little ceremonies called the Cha Shu Ji. I didn't find the English version of it, but in ancient times, it basically um, the whole ceremony ceremony. What do you do? And you have to show up stuff, show off stuff that you got right. from China and stuff. Common era. There we go. Oh, common Sorry. era, not Christian. Right, right. Makes sense oh, because they had right. to kind of. I think they wanted to kind of get they rid of get that rid connotation. Of yeah. Right. Okay. Hey, thanks, See. Timothy. Ah, mm. thank you, and. So I just want to. This is very interesting because uh, they have to show off the things from China. They, mm. Like uh, if you join a, a more traditional style of a, a Japanese tea ceremony, you know everything as a guest, not even the host of the guest. Everything you do, every word you say, are written as a script. You have to follow it. There's no wiggle rooms. Otherwise, it's considered rude or something. Right, right. right. Uh, but uh, certain part is that they are gonna display you the napkin, the the everything. But in the ancient times when it just started, it's basically show off. This cup is from China. That thing is from China. Mm. So it's uh, as somebody who live today, live in today's uh, made in China is almost a stand for low end stuff. Mm. While right. A couple of uh, hundred years ago and for thousands of years, China has been the right. uh, export country of luxury goods. Right. Like porcelain, in, tea. Porcelain, silk. You know, in the 17th century silk, right. in Europe, they couldn't produce the same uh, silk quali uh, same quality of silk mm. as China. So they would have produced uh, silk products with the Chinese patterns and the fake made in China. Right, right. <laughs> so they, that they were counterfeiting Chinese silk, basically. Exactly. So it's a really different time. Mm. Um, okay, back to the Japan. So at that time, he has that kind of a tea ceremony, uh, cha shu ji. Well, in those are more for you know upper class, like uh, uh, nobles and uh, their emperor. What is that called? Anyway, it's for upper class. Well, for the like more lords, lords yeah. and stuff, yeah. Like and for more, more common people, they would have a cha ji he, which is a tea gathering to uh, share teas and um, uh, enjoy some time together. And later on, the major development actually in terms of a, a tea ceremony in uh, in Japan is in the fifteenth and the sixteenth century by Murata Juko and. And Seno Rikyu. Seno Rikyu. Uh, I'm probably butchering him just as bad as she is. So, um, yeah, but that was my best guess. Sun Tian Zhu Guang and Qian Li Xiu. That's Chinese. I I'm, I apologize. I don't know. I just look up them on Google in terms of the English pronunciation. But those really set the standard for the Japanese ceremony. And uh, if you look at. Uh, uh, Seno Rikyu. Rikyu. He actually Google calls the Rikyu. Japanese artist or aesthetic. Like he not only tea, but the whole like if you go to those Chinese uh, gardens, the whole aesthetics of that kind of a garden, that kind of a tree, uh, the 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 tree display and mm. uh, the whole aesthetic. He has a profound influence on. The whole Japanese aesthetics and um, wow, yeah. But nowadays, a, a lot of what we in North America are familiar with the chato are revolutionized. Old times are extremely niche. Even in Japan, you ask uh, the Japanese in on the street, they're like, uh, "We don't know anything about chato." That's not for right. common people. It's extremely niche, but they. In the last uh, half century, they try really hard to promote that not only in uh, overseas, like in uh, the West, but also in their main country to right. get more people to know this cultural gem of Japan. So yeah, smart. 
Yeah, smart, it is. Right? It's actually it's a lot for the uh, Chinese for us to learn how to right. change it. On the other hand, we're different, right. really different cultural flavor. Like how they used to make everything step by step. You say the words, you say the fixed right. format, which we don't have that in China. It would drive yeah, us crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So how could you squeeze a mahjong game in around that? It'd be really hard, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's actually really interesting. Um, again, a lot of things we think is is remote or traditional is not as traditional like a Kung Fu tea and all those uh, Chinese tea ceremony we're mm. looking at is uh, not as traditional as you would think. It's not as ancient as it feels, no. right? No, no. Right. Yeah. You do you do you brew with a guy one. You feel like this is an ancient ritual. You're in, and it's cool. As you can feel that way. It's totally fine. I'm not saying don't. Mm. But it's just not as old as you as you think. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. That's it for today. A little bit. Is that too much of history? <laughs> not too much date? Yeah. Let us know in the comments below if it was a little bit a little bit too much, or if it if you love that stuff, then yeah. you know, let us know. Hey, give me more of the history that, if that's what you like. It's uh, super interesting, and uh, there's a lot of it there to be to be unearthed and turned over and rehashed. Yeah. Personally, I love that, and I always throw in the date, the year. Like uh, the previous week, uh, video I did on the Queen's favorite. Uh, black tea and her uh, her little relationship with Chinese black tea. I have a lot of a uh, year in this year. This tea is developing. This year, this tea is blah blah blah. When I was doing that video, I wasn't sure if people would like that because yeah, I think it's, it's nice for context. Number. <laughs> okay. Well, it's nice for context, you know, and it gives you. Um, I, I'm never going to remember all the numbers, but it gives mm -hmm. you an idea. Oh, that's when it was. For example, when you mentioned that. Um, um, Isai, Isai, I can't remember his name, but it, I was going to ask. That's that's just that sort of Tang Dynasty era. Twelfth era century, right? no, it's a, around the Song Dynasty time. Oh, after, so, after. Yeah, actually, mm. you can see in a uh, Japanese chato, there's a lot of uh, combination of a Tang style of things as well as the Song. Mm. The majority will be mostly Song, especially right, nowadays. Right. We are, we're pretty familiar with like much of those powder things. Right, right, right. Yeah. So interesting. Mm. So yeah, so that is the um, the second last episode wrapping up here. Make sure to tune in next week for uh, the conclusion of season two, the classic of tea. If you like this video, guys, take a minute, uh, reach down to the um, to the little thumb up button and give it a press. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you love this kind of content, subscribing will help you make sure you don't miss out. When we go live, you'll get a little bing bong on your phone that will tell you to tune back in. And um, yeah, uh, the Discord link is down below. Uh, the most important thing I think I need to do is thank you guys for joining us, for yes. participating thank in you. the discussion. Your questions are uh, everything to us. Uh, uh, participating in tea trivia, of course, is fun, <laughs> but it's really those questions and the comments and the input. Uh, the you know helping me out with the common era. Thank you for that. Like that's what really makes us mm. great. It's the back and forth. So tune in next week. We'll wrap up the classic of tea by Lu Yu. I'll have my phone fixed so it doesn't do that when it's on. Do not disturb. <laughs> and uh, until next time, guys. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Da -da 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 -da. Where is it? I cannot find it. Keep waving. <laughs> <laughs> I literally can't find. It. Here it is. Bye.